Hey, Dad. Yes, Ryan. We got to do that thing where we talk about our gym or your gym. Be, right. To be specific. Yes, but you've been training there lately, so maybe it will become your gym too. I don't know what, what you call what I do there, training. It's well, more... no, no, the guys told me tonight. They said, hey, I saw your son. He said he's going to might come in he might come in and start doing Muay Thai. Yeah, well, you know, I say a lot of things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what everybody can do? They can try out the Muay Thai classes at Gamma for free. Yeah. Yeah, they can, they can do a one-shot. You know, you walk in there... And you're not immediately like, you're not like the vet where they're like, you walked in the door, that'll be $400. You get to try out Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, boxing, uh, JKD, that's Jikin Do, Keji Kimbo, uh, Cali. And um, hey, you know what you can do? You can check the website. That's www.montrealmartialarts.com for the official Gamma website for all your martial arts needs. You'll find out prices, times, and everything else you need. And uh, without further ado, let's start this podcast. All right. All right. All right. You know any funny voices, Dad? No, I don't know any funny voices. I know about 700, and uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll do them next episode. Okay. All right, bye. Welcome to two on... Uh, Dad, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's either pretending it's a foot-long sandwich or... A foot-long sandwich, Or a foot-long yeah. sandwich. <laughs> Welcome to two on and son. This is a special handheld edition. It's going to be a short one because... Dad and I don't feel like holding microphones for more than a couple of minutes, but we just, it's been, a, a, I keep saying it's been a while when we do shows, but it has been a while because Dad and I have other things to do. Yeah, well, we recorded a show, but it was so long that it was going to take longer to edit it than it would have been to make a new show, so yeah, here we are. Like, you know, some <laughs> filmmakers, they're like, let's make it into two or three parts. Like, we reverse hobbited. We just said, <laughs> and then we didn't make a movie at all. Let's just move into one of those houses and underground, and then make another another show. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, you know, this is a martial arts based podcast. Philip Jonah is a uh, recognized as a member of the Canadian Black Belt Hall of Fame, a uh, high ranking member, a high ranking uh, guy in many martial arts styles. But I will just go off on a huge tangent right now and just <laughs> say that. Uh, I, I don't see the point of having three Hobbit movies when I watch them and stuff like that. I don't ever feel like I'll watch them again, you know, <laughs> and that, and I think that's the worst thing of all. And, you know, the funny thing is, like, you know, that wouldn't matter to most people. Like, to yeah. me, I don't think of watching a second movie yeah. or a movie second time. But I know you. But you the, like but, movies. Yeah. And when you see a movie, you will consciously go back and watch it a number of times. Because you really enjoy the structure and you enjoy the progress of the film and it's really interesting to see. And you go, wow. And then you go and watch it again and again because you like it. And you and when you say that a movie is only a one-timer, you know that's a one-timer movie. That's but, like, but you know what? It's not a one-timer. Big Hero 6. That is, that is great stuff. I saw that. I took mom for a birthday to see <laughs> movie McFarlane, which is the one of the first... And few movies I've seen since, I guess, Chariots of Fire, just about dudes running. Um, and, uh, you know, they're running, and Kevin Costner's being Kevin Costner. And, uh, you know, all I can say is it's good to use surrounded by good actors, you know, like in Robin Hood. <laughs> but um, anyway, getting to the martial arts business, Father, you uh, you you were just in New York City. I was in New York New City. New York City. And uh, tell us about New York City. Tell us about Well, um, anyway, I was invited down to, uh, to New York City by the Brooklyn Elite Piquiti Jersey Group and the New Jersey Piquiti Jersey Group or Piquiti Jersey and New Jersey Group. And uh, these guys let, invited me down and we had a seminar on uh, Saturday and Sunday and uh, I had a great time. We stayed just off of Flatbush in uh, Brooklyn, which is kind of a neat place because you always imagine, you know, you say that the Lords of Flatbush and you see that movie from a long time ago. Yeah. And then, of course, nothing looks like that anymore. And uh, no, it's really neat because they got all these great bridges in New York and we kept crossing them back and forth because we were going from Brooklyn to into Queens or, or, or into Man Manhattan and then back to Queens. Stop moving your hands so much. Okay. And, uh, well, I was, the, I was the king in Queens. Ha ha. Oh, yeah? Anyway, okay. yeah. So, no, it was really nice. It was, uh, we went and we did training. By we, you mean you and mom? Uh, well, the, with the group of, of us. Okay, but mom went as well. Mom went as we well. We should specify that. Yeah. Anyway, um, we, we went to Queens and we had a, we did the first part of the seminar. The first, it was interesting because the first day was at a performance art center. So, uh, they had a Marley floor, which was one of those rubber rolled up things. Yeah. And we were admonished not to drop our sticks because they didn't want to break the floor. 
And Marley floors, for people who don't know, are those roll-up uh, rubber floors that exist for people dancing because they really make it easier for you to move. And the first time I remember seeing one was actually in a Rolling Stone tour back in uh, when I was working for a local promoter. And uh, they had a, the Rolling Stones had brought a Marley floor with them. And uh, it was really amazing because, of course, it helped make being able to sing and dance and do all of this stuff. Oh, okay. So they're special. Okay, so I, I, that's why I dance like shit. I don't have this Marley floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't say that's the reason, but they definitely helped make it was stuff. And this was back in, what, the 72 tour where... Um, oh, God, 50 years of Marley floor, I'd be, I'd be <laughs> dancing in the town. All right. So so anyway, so you're in New York. Um, I don't know. You've, you've been going to New York for a couple of years and stuff like that. What's your favorite part of the Big Apple? Well, I mean, it's it's kind of hard not to like Manhattan because it's it's where things are centrally located, but it's not the same anymore. I mean, like before it was like Manhattan was Manhattan and that was what everybody thought of as like New York, the Big Apple. And then all these other places uh, like Queens and Brooklyn, and everything like that. The Bronx. And the Bronx, they were considered sort of like, oh, these are the other places. But now every place is hot and happening. I mean, there was a... <laughs> You know, when we get when we cross the bridge, cross the Manhattan Bridge, to go into uh, Brooklyn, it was as if well, the bridge was there, but that was the only thing. I mean, it was a, you know, there was these huge buildings. It was you know really quite amazing. Everything's being built up. The action and the uh, adventure is everywhere. So, New York is even bigger and better than before. All right, bigger, better, back for revenge. All right, so you're going to the Philippines now, right? I'm going to the Philippines. And this uh, what is the uh, what is the reason for this trip to the Philippines? Well, the uh, it's the fifth um, Asia Pacific Piquita Garcia Global Event. Okay. Um, my teacher Tuan Leo T. Gahe, or Grand Tuan Leo Gahe, is heading up a seminar in a place. This time it's in Cebu. Before we were always on the island of um, we we're always on the big island on the big island on. Um, you know, Dad. Fortunately <clears throat> for you, that most of our listeners won't know the difference. You could okay. say you could say the uh, you could say okay. the the, the, okay. the island of love. All, and they uh, up to, up to this time, uh, all this yeah. other time, the uh, the conventions have been on Luzon, which is where Manila is. They're on Gilligan's Island. Uh, they're on Gilligan's Island now. Yeah. This is the Cebu <laughs> island of Cebu, uh, okay. and uh, near Mactan, and that this is where actually. Uh, Ferdinand Magellan back in 1521 uh, met his end and uh, they celebrated there and there's a big picture or a big picture a big statue of uh, the well-known warrior Lapu Lapu who is reputed to be the man who ended Magellan's life but uh, the thing is that it's this is the location and we're, that's where we're having our uh, all right so this is gonna, like it's hollow ground man it's, gonna... it's hollow ground and uh, we're going to be doing a four-day thing from the 19th to the 22nd what does the expression hollowed ground come from because I've been using it but I really should know what it well hollowed basically means holy Okay. And so where uh, things happen, where, you know, like hallowed ground, for example, people are born, are not born, people are buried on hallowed ground or I in hallowed you, ground. I got you, I got you, I got you. Things uh, that, were, that have been blessed by people. So I've been watching this wrestling stuff and they're like, Madison Square Garden, <laughs> that's hallowed ground. Oh, boy. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. People should get buried there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's the amazing thing that the most... Um, like I buy into the, the in wrestling, I buy into the sports entertainment bar. You look at it as like a bunch of guys who are faking fighting. I look at it as a bunch of guys who are pulling off stunts. And uh, you know, even if you're fake fighting or not, jumping off of a ladder twenty feet onto some pretending to hit someone's head, if you were actually trying to hit his head, there's a chance that he actually would kill your fall. <laughs> so, so the fact that he's not crushing the air guy. Okay, well, no, I, him, okay. No, be, some before love there. We, before we put me into the class of people that. You know, doesn't respect those guys because they aren't fighters. Yeah. I remember back when guys <laughs> like Ricky Steamboat were fighting and the British Bulldogs, and they used to have stuff. And I used to watch it occasionally because it was amazing what these guys would do. I mean, you were talking about the yeah. stunt thing. I've stood on the stage, not on the turnbuckle, but I've stood on the stage and looked down, and I'm going, I don't know if I would jump from the apron of a ring onto the floor because most of the time they're concrete. And I see these guys climbing up four sets of ropes, balancing themselves, and then launching themselves off onto God knows what. You know, yeah. So they could they'll break their fall on a, you know, a piece of wood on a table. And it's, and you can you just know that this is kind of like stunts in the 1920s. Like, sure, it's going to work. <laughs> How do you know? 
I don't. Who I'm cares? Sure. We're going to all die of polio <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, but th those guys were really amazing. Oh, wait, let me get this straight. So you've worked these wrestling events? No, no, no. I didn't work the wrestling events. But when I used to do, uh, when I was corner man for people, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the ring is the ring. I mean, oh, it's, okay, on the, okay. it's above the stage. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the guys were doing that. But, uh, I, but I did, when I did my touring in the uh, 70s, a couple of times we would well, go by, and it was really amazing because that guy Ricky go Steamboat. Well, we drive, we we would bump into people as you're walking through airports. Yeah, you know, you're going from A to B, and you're going from Cincinnati to Los Angeles. Well, you may c travel through two or three other airports in a connected uh, rail, a uh, connected rail, connected flight thing. And uh, one time we, uh, you know, I passed by Ricky Steamboat and two or three of the people who are in his entourage and mm. you know i mean like this guy was really buff he was a little smaller than i was but uh, mm. i mean not, not that i'm huge but you just realize that it's kind of like when you see people who are gymnasts and you don't realize they're about the size of a toothbrush yeah i mean they're really really you know they're buff and everything but they're like you know like nadia kodominich the she won all those tens back in the 76 olympics in montreal well She's like a size of like two two, two toothbrushes tied together. I mean, yeah, she's, she's like olive she oil. She was tiny, right? Yeah. Or, or you know, and then most of the guys, it's just which proves that Popeye's like you know, uh, a a pin man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but the reality is that people who are really really big, mm. uh, unfortunately, have a lot of gravity weighing on them. Yeah. And you know, when you see these basketball players who are seven feet. And running back and forth down, they 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 are amazing athletes because my God, yeah. the gravity of the Earth is pulling at them all the time. <laughs> oh God, yeah. All right, so um, yeah, that was that was a, that was a nice little fun wrestling tangent. But uh, but speaking of New York, let's get back into the New York groove here. Okay. Um, do you have anything funny? I don't know. Tell tell the viewers, hence me. Because I never bothered asking this <laughs> before, but I don't know. Do you have any funny New York experiences from back in the day? Uh, well, Cause I because I, I got one. Oh, what's that? Um, uh, when I went to New York, the only time we decided to walk somewhere, and then we kept walking, and then four hours later, we got there. <laughs> like New York is big. Oh no, it's way bigger it's than so big. So big. Yes, yeah, and uh, <laughs> we went to this thing called Nintendo World, which is pretty cool. And I bought a bunch of stuff there because it took two hours to walk there. I'm like. Well, I'm gonna buy stuff here. Because <laughs> <laughs> and what's really funny is we were walking, and um, you hear all this sh about these people in Times Square that are dressed up like, you know, here dressed up like things, but not exactly because they can't because of copyright. Like you'll have a guy that looks like Elmo, but not very much. And then I find out that Elmo stabbed somebody like months later. <laughs> and I remember being specifically rude to him, but I'm just like, wow, I'm really glad that he didn't go crazy on me. <laughs> well, it's cool, though, because when we went to New York, we were on tour at The Real Deal, and we were with um, this band uh, from Japan. And it was cool that they got to see New York and stuff like that. It was this band, Misled Balds. And uh, it, it was kind of cool to go there because we wanted to, but it was also nice to be like, you know, hey, you guys, you traveled across the ocean, and we're making an effort to show you some stuff that you've probably heard about or seen in yeah. movies and stuff like that. Well, mm. I mean, I, actually, the guys that I, you know, you were asking before if I'm if I'm going to Japan this time, I'm not going to Japan. But uh, the guys from Japan will be in uh, the Philippines visiting, and uh, some will be attending the seminar or the, the convention. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I love that country, Dad. I say it every time we record a show. I just, I just don't know. It's just, it's just so cool. Japan looks like my, what my imagination, like when you're like, close your eyes and think of the coolest thing ever. And it involves a bunch of giant robots and <laughs> hot chicks and school girl outfits. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, that's just what it's like. And uh, honestly, it's, it's really cool. And uh, New York was fun too, but I was only there for a day and obviously you can't do New York in a day. No. But um, it was just good to just, experience it we, i remember walking all day and we wanted to go see the statue of liberty so we walk and we walk and we take the subway and all that stuff and this we couldn't figure out how to use the subway so this homeless guy helped us pay for the tickets then insisted on being tipped <laughs> so that, that was interesting but we go and we go to see the statue of liberty and it was dark then and that statue is really far away from the shoreline. I got to say, you got to take a boat to kind of see it, you know? Well, that's and I'm fun. like, those guys in Ghostbusters too sure went through a lot of shit they didn't bother showing us. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, you know, when you write a script, you get, a, get you get to go and see the Statue of Liberty, and it doesn't matter what you think. About All it. I needed was one of those like cinematic wipes, <laughs> and just wake up five hours later. Yeah, but uh, no, New York was great. New York was cool. And um, your story about New York now, you're saying, I said, what's funny about New York, Dad? And then you said... Nothing. <laughs> oh. I know, I was like, how do you get to... A, a story. Do, a, I saw this guy, and he said, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And I said, practice. But that's <laughs> not my story. That's not his story either. Anyway, no, New York, New York has always been uh, really amazing. I remember uh, back in 1981 when uh, I went to New York to uh, do some training... And uh, it was, uh, actually it was 1982, because 91 was when we were in Oneonta, New York, which was off upstate. And we were in 1982, and, and it's kind of funny, because one of the places where we did this seminar this time, on the Sunday, was in a place called Alphabet City. Alphabet City is where there's the A, B, C Street, all those ones. Yeah. And Alphabet City what used to be kind of like... It was run by Big Bird and stuff. And Big Bird, that's right. <laughs> it was run by Big Bird, who was a drug dealer. Hey, Bird. <laughs> anyway, so... Snuffy. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, Bird. <laughs> yeah, but the Snuffy was the one who used to snuff people out. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, but it was funny, because when... Uh, when Peter and I were there... Elmo, Elmo had a tickle house. <laughs> a late night tickle house. <laughs> Yes, and and all those girls from Japan that you like so much were there working. Anyway, the uh, it was it was just funny because we were don't we were fuck there. with my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that I I, I I take that offensive. All right, please continue. Uh, okay. Anyway, but um, no, we, we he was telling me about how the last time he'd stayed in New York, there was some guy who was trying to break into. Uh, into his place. I mean, and they have all, you know, whenever you see these windows with people put like these grates over the windows so that people can't break in, it's real because people try to break in. <laughs> it's like, oh, strange, yes. But um, yeah, no, New York has been um, the site of many, many good trainings for me. I've been very fortunate. Okay, such as? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I used to have the pleasure of training. There's a guy named Tom Bizio who doesn't do martial arts per se anymore he does internal martial arts like shingi and bagua but in the world of like external martial arts he was a, a big a big uh, factor in my training because he was the guy in stick fighting that was really kind of the best of all the people that i knew and he was you know he took a well i'll think i think he took a liking to us or to me because he showed me a lot of material and I've, i'm very very grateful to him for that he allowed us to stay at his place or it, he had a school on uh, excuse me, he had a school in new york and uh, we were allowed to sleep there which saved us a lot of money if you've ever tried finding a hotel in new york you know exactly what i mean you ever tried driving or parking anywhere exactly new york, well yeah but things anyway so we've mm. We, um, we were able to stay at his place, and it was really quite amazing because it, there was a lot of information, and he, he was very generous with it. And he also came to Montreal a bunch of times, so we were really, uh, you know, we were very fortunate. The only thing that's really unfortunate is that uh, when he basically stopped doing external martial arts in around 1988, um, his, most of the people in their group kind of went to other things, and there is uh, no strong presence of... Uh, his group. I mean, I, I, there are people who still practice, but you know, it's not like you know they had this number one student who is still doing stuff and is findable. So it's time to come back together, people. We remember. <laughs> we remember the Titans. <laughs> come back and avenge my death. No, but it was amazing yeah. because um, I I received a. An invitation to a a seminar called a San Miguel seminar done by somebody in New York City. And San Miguel was the style that Tom Bizio studied as well as Piquiti Tercia that I study because he'd gone to um, and train he, and with... And he was cool with this? Well, he was very cool with this, yeah, but he, he trained okay. with this guy, Momoy Kenyeti, in Cebu, which is uh, where I'm going, but he's passed away a few years ago. Yeah. And uh, no, but I saw on the, the top part, you know, on Facebook, they have, you know, your profile picture and then you have some kind of picture, a bigger picture of whatever on the top. I don't know, what do they call that? Oh uh, yeah, you got your profile picture and your timeline photo. Okay, okay. So that big picture at the top. Anyway, there was say a, it with me, Father. Time timeline photo. Anyway, so <laughs> on his timeline, it is important photo, to me that you know what this means. Okay, no, no, I just didn't know what they called it. Anyway, so on this timeline photo, um, they they showed Momoi Kenyeti's uh, lineage, and Tom Bizio's name was out there, very very prominently positioned. So, uh, you know, it's like he was recognized as 
as a very good practitioner, not just by me, but by others. Well, I think that's a, I think that's enough for about the New York trip, Dad. Uh, just to give people a little a bit of updates, the gym will be moving at some point. But when it is, well, we'll... I think it's going to. Uh, now that I've been there the last couple of days, yeah. and uh, everything seems to be on its last bits. I mean, I've, I have my two by four office, and I don't mean much bigger than that. It's true. It's actually like four by eight or four by ten. Uh, my office is basically a place where I get to hide. It's not a place for anything else because I'll actually maybe you can put stuff. a bat pole in it, considering a the gym's pole. two floors. I mean, maybe a bat pole outside my office. Yeah, and, you know they put the tiles down and things are actually uh, progressing. Actually, I have to get a hold of all my friends who have been telling me that they're going to dedicate their life or at least five minutes of it to helping me move my school. So hopefully, we'll be able to coordinate all that stuff. Okay, so right here. We're calling you out. <laughs> <We're> you. <please. laughs> okay. Well, actually, the thing—the only thing I'm not looking forward to okay. is spending 24 hours on an airplane. <laughs> really? Because when you go halfway around the world, I mean, you lose half a day when you cross. Well, you lose a day, yeah. and you spend 12 hours and 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 12 hours going backwards half of the world <laughs> away, and you. So it takes you. Well, I leave at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. And I get there at midnight on Sunday. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I go from here to Chicago, Chicago to Seoul, Korea, and then Seoul, Korea to Manila. And I can assure you, it's going to hurt every step of the way. All right. So this is two on Philip Jelena. Yeah, and this is Ryan Stick Jelena. Sticking it to No you. relation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're coming to you live. If not really from uh, two on Coming to you recorded. Yeah, <laughs> recorded. Post reduction. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.